thing. Okay, so why don't we just jump <laughs> right into the secret shopper Q&A? Because honestly, Sarah, I have some questions for you right out of the gate. I mean, how hard did you want to tear your freaking hair out being on the phone with Dell? For you probably spent, I mean, you probably spent hours <laughs> on the phone with Dell. I did. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. Here, here, I have a tattoo that says patience. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see it. But uh, I'm like yeah. a super patient person. So like those kind of calls don't bother me at all. Like I was totally chill the whole time. Really? I was dancing to the hold music. Yeah, I had no issues. It, okay. it was kind of fun, actually. <laughs> that is uh, not I don't think what... I've ever heard anyone describe being being held, put on hold for hours as fun. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I, that's cool. Yeah. So, okay, fine then. So being on hold is fine, but then... I was totally chill the whole time. Really? But what about, like, what about the... Okay, fine. What, what about, about them scamming you? Sure. Yeah, how about I that? I didn't even realize how many times they asked me if I wanted to buy a warranty, if I'm being honest with you. I was just, really? like, so focused on you... making sure that I didn't seem nervous in the video that, like, I was totally chill during the whole call. I, I had no idea how many times they asked for warranty. <laughs> like... You must have known it was more than once, though. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Okay. I, I kept looking over at Jake, and he was giving me the look, like, like you know. It's but so I, funny. I, I... Because <laughs> when I was watching the footage back, I was even just like, wow, she is like such a professional. Like you were just, you were honestly, you were a better phone representative than half of the phone representatives that you talked to. You were just like, yeah. oh no, thank you. I'm good. Thank you. And then I you did customer service for like three years. So it's just ingrained in my brain to be nice to whoever you're talking to. And so that's just the kind of person I am now. <laughs> so, okay, fine then. Uh, I'm going to wait and yeah. see if, uh, actually, okay, we do, we do have a couple of uh, questions from people. Yeah. Uh, Leland over on Floatplane asks, I mean, would you have felt different about it if you had spent your own $1,500? Was part of it that this was just like company money, la-di-da, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'm being paid right now. I mean, the thing is, is I don't know anything really about PCs, so I didn't know what I was buying in the first place. So, like, if I was going into it knowing what I needed to buy, then obviously I would feel differently. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, during the call... <clears throat> I did. I, I, it was fine. <laughs> You're just totally chill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Did you ever get the bacon scented face masks? Asks DigiDude512. No, they were sold out. <laughs> oh, really? You did try to buy it? <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. fantastic. And I, it seems interesting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love Worth it. looking into, I guess. <laughs> okay. Has the experience made you feel like learning to build your own PC? This is one of my questions. <laughs> so I actually do have a PC of my own, but I had a lot of guidance um, when I was building it. Um, so I- But you did I build it would, yourself. I, I did build it, yes. Really? Oh, okay. Um, yes, yes. I just, I just had like a ton of direction. I didn't, I, okay, I wasn't building it by myself. I had somebody with me, and so we were building it together, but it was basically me watching them build my PC for me. Um, okay. that's why when I'm like pulling out the Ram sticks in the video, I have no idea what I'm doing. Cause like, honestly, <laughs> I haven't yeah. really done it before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, even as that some, GPU, that was pretty crunchy oh. to watch. I mean, even I, as... I think I felt physical pain watching that section. And I think a lot of the audience probably did as well. That as, was, yeah. yeah. As someone who's made a brand out of like manhandling hardware on camera and like kind of memeing <laughs> yeah. that stuff up. Even for me, watching that was like, ooh. <laughs> was I learned from the best, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie. You don't watch the videos. Hey, that one ram stick that I dropped, you were behind me. So, like, I blame you for that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't even think you knew I was there. Yeah, I, I mean, she dropped ram stick. You threw a ram stick. I don't know. I don't know which is worse. Okay, Nerdum yeah. asks, uh, oh, if you guys are just tuning in, we've got Sarah, our one and only secret shopper. Actually, we have two secret shoppers. We've had Agent Janice and Agent Sarah now, but uh, she just wrapped up the latest run of secret shoppers. So she's asking questions, or <clears throat> answering questions from the audience <laughs> about what the experience was like. Nerdum over on Floatplane asks, do you actually love roosters? <laughs> 
Sorry, I had to. Throw I love that animals. At you. The entire That's comment kind of section of that video was like, <laughs> "Yes, don't yeah. worry, I yeah. I intentionally made that innuendo, actually, if I'm being honest with you." Um, but I do love animals, just to answer that question. So, all right, there we go. <laughs> Roosters are in the in the vein of that. Got it. Uh, psycho. I, I have one. I have one. I have one. Yeah, hit me. Yeah. If, if you were so you have a computer, but if you needed to buy a new computer and you decided to go the route of buying a pre-built after this experience, which one of those brands would you go with? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh... Um, so if I'm being honest, I can barely remember which companies I even talked to. <laughs> All right, but I, I mean, yeah, that... sure. <laughs> Didn't Origin do good or something? <laughs> well, okay, it kind of depends on how you, uh, hmm. it depends what on how you, you interpret value? it. Yeah, Origin did a great job of the customer service. You really liked the Origin people, but they shipped you a really slow computer. <laughs> if you want it to show up perfectly, but you don't really care what it actually is, then yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was in a crate. I mean, they gave you a $50- I like RGB. Like, they gave you a $50 prepaid visa for some reason. Instead and a t-shirt, right? Yeah, instead of just $50 off the like <laughs> computer in the first place, which might've been smarter. <laughs> Okay, but for real, I don't think I'd ever buy a pre-build. I'm a really crafty person, so I'd love to like actually build a PC on my own without guidance, just like kind of do it. Okay, <laughs> you know? interesting. So audience, yeah. audience, what do you guys think of this as a video concept? We do a follow-up to Secret Shopper where instead of Sarah, um, you know, putting all of her time and effort into dealing with like shady sales reps, she puts her time and effort into with nothing but Linus Tech Tips videos, researching the parts, we actually make her research the parts herself, and building the PC herself. So it's like a two-part shoot. And then maybe what we could do to kind of simulate the experience of just being like a, a, a random that just wants to build a computer, you have like kind of lifelines, but they're in the form of like forum or Reddit posts or something like that. So. I'm sitting there on like the other end of a of like a chat or like you you literally have to go on Linus Tech Tips forum or something like that and post your questions and if people are too slow like I can step in and answer them but you otherwise have to completely go through the process and then decide at the end would you do it yourself completely yourself without help or would you just buy, buy a pre-built for what the difference in price is I sound? feel like you should I feel like you should have her forum handle be anonymous Yeah because mm. if, it, if it's a real, and maybe yours is too, and you can answer to help. But, but you because won't know if it's a good answer from me or if it's just some random. <gasps> that would be so much fun. Oh my gosh. Can we do that? <laughs> and then you guys should have a baseline one that's also built by like Jake or someone. And then like test them at the end and see how they compare. I kind of like it. All right. We'll have to give you a budget. Same thing. Just because it's like it's too easy if there's no budget. That's not really even fun. Right. I've got a question. And people from, would have a budget. Yeah. I've got a question yeah. from HP DeskJet 500. Hey, Sarah, what are your thoughts on Secret Shopper basically turning you into a meme? <laughs> I think this guy follows me on Twitter. I see his tweets all the time. Um, I am fine with it, I guess. I never thought I would reach meme level. But like, Linus, watch out, I'm coming for you. Oh, I know, right? I'm trying to find it right now. I don't know what the typical caption is for it, but it is, oh yeah, here it is. All right, here, I'm just gonna flip over to my display <laughs> capture here. This is freaking amazing, this picture. Like, what even is that? It's... <laughs> what, I don't even know what part of the video that was from. It's from when I dropped the GPU. Oh, that's right. Hold on a second, there it is, there it is. So there, there, there's Sarah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. It's absolutely freaking amazing. Like what, what it, what were you, what was going through your head at that moment? I mean, I was literally just as cringe as anybody else watching that video. That's my cringe face to me dropping the GPU. Like I, I knew it was bad. I know the GPU is one of the most expensive parts of the computer. And I was just like, Oh, it was so bad. Oh my yeah. goodness. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, this is a question for me. Where did you work as a CSR? I feel like I should know this because, you know, I probably saw your resume at some point or another, but actually maybe I didn't. Maybe I never saw your resume. I don't think I was involved in hiring you at all, was I? <laughs> no, you were. 
Yeah, that explains how it happened. That's how we end up with all these Gen Zs around here. I think I was consulted. I think I was sort of given like a description of you and then the other top candidate. And it was like, okay, do you want the one that's like lots of raw potential, like good dragon energy, but like kind of random? Or do you want the one that's like experienced and professional, but probably not as much like dragon energy? And then I'm not going to tell you which one you were because I would never comment on an HR decision, you know, on a live stream <laughs> like this. But uh, that's uh, <laughs> where, where exactly did you work? Um, so I worked at a restaurant called Mr. Mike's for a while as a hostess. Oh. So you really learn to deal with people when you work in a restaurant <laughs> because Got it. nobody's ever happy. Um, and then I also worked uh, at a thrift store for a while. So, yeah, really, it's, it's a vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna pop some tags. <laughs> Only got twenty dollars in my pocket. You don't I even think, know like, what song overall, I'm singing, do you? You have no idea what song. I'm, no, I don't believe it's you. Thrift shop by Macklemore. All right, fine, fine. All right, okay. Linus. <laughs> All right. Well, I had no reason to think that you would know what that song is. It's from before you were born. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I it's was gonna say like I think that's a bit of a boomer song though. Yeah, 20, yeah. 2012, 2012, 2012. I'm pretty sure you weren't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, what else we got here in the float plane chat? Ah, uh, oh man, it's just like tons of spam. OMG, yes, we have to do that video yeah, concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. do you just want to talk? Is there anything that you wanted to say that you felt didn't come across in the videos? Um, okay, I got accused a lot of like helping out one of the people too much. You mm -hmm. did about about telling him that I haven't checked the RAM stick yet. But like during my call at the beginning, he said this could be the problem, this could be the problem, the RAM stick could be the problem. And so I just thought I would like bring that back up. <laughs> you did so it's not really helping him because he did suggest it. You, you know? were pretty like... helpful in some places. You were like <laughs> very helpful in some cases. I was like Honestly, though, none of the ones where you were super helpful ended up winning it anyway. So yeah. clearly it wasn't good enough. <laughs> I I just like helping people, you know? <laughs> it was painful to like know exactly what was wrong with the computer and them like trying, I probably not their hardest, honestly, but trying. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be able to help them. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> All right, uh, let me have a look. Uh, Speed Whoa, Demon so Adam. Someone brought up Sarah versus Dennis. Sarah versus Dennis? I already know Sarah would win. Like, oh man, <laughs> Dennis has even built multiple computers and still, when I watched Dennis, did you see, did you see Dennis's video where he uh, collabed with Anthony, uh, where Anthony was like uh, instructing him uh, through like FPV, like FPV goggles and a camera that was um, installed oh, on Dennis's forehead. No, and then Dennis so cool. is blindfolded trying to build a computer. And it was just, it, he, he actually broke the motherboard. Like I had to go, I had to rebend a bunch of pins in the socket after. It was painful. Oh Meanwhile, me and Yvonne just like absolutely slayed it because she knows how to follow basic instructions. Like it was, it was <laughs> so hard to watch, man. So hard to watch. <laughs> Um, oh, that geez. video has a terrible like dislike ratio, not because I think that it's not entertaining, but I think people just couldn't people don't like people don't like broken hardware too. Yeah. I, I think they just couldn't. I thought it was just too hard. <laughs> um, all right. Which one of the, which one of the things, Ooh, this is interesting. If you were buying your own, let's say you were buying a pre-built out of everything we tested, which one do you think is the most important to you after the fact, after going through this with everyone? Initial sales, uh, tech support, or the actual value of the product? Like, which one holds the most weight for you? I think the actual value of the product. Because, like, in the end, you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth of whatever you're buying. Um, like, customer support is important. But, like, there's videos like we have on YouTube where if you really need help fixing something, you can just, like, look it up. Um and then like buying something over the phone doesn't really happen anymore um so yeah i think i think value is the most important part of like the whole secret shopper series miss butt just are you critiquing yeah. the uh methodology of our secret shopper I think you just did. series i'm not the only one 
But that wasn't I my think question, that what though. we're doing is important. <laughs> I think what we're doing is important because we are showing companies what they're like uh, to a regular customer. Um, whether that's over the phone or through email, usually customer support is pretty similar. So I don't know. I, I, I am critiquing it, but like not harshly. <laughs> Maybe for part three, it yeah. should have to be another like uninformed purchaser and they have to go through the online system so and like the, whatever system oh. they end up with is the system that they end up with. And it's, it, that's how you grade essentially their, their configurator. I'll tell you right now, the reason we do it the way that we do it is more from, for like a production for, for production purposes, not because I think that's yeah. necessarily how everyone would go and buy a computer. Uh, the reason is that as Luke, okay. as you and I have experienced during scrapyard wars time and oh, time God. again, the first episode of a Scrapyard Wars series is always just like us with our heads, our faces buried in our computers shopping online. And it's not entertaining. It's not no. interesting. Yeah. Whereas if we were able to go through a physical market, it would be a lot more interesting for sure. Meanwhile, if you're talking to someone on the phone, it's like comedy gold because it is amazing how bad a job these companies do. And from my point of view, we're evaluating a service that they claim to offer. If you have a sales line, then someone who knows what they're doing should pick it up and advise you in a way that is, you know, not deceptive. It's that simple. So, yeah, I see the point. Uh, that you guys are making and it's not the first time we've gotten this feedback it's just that's why we do it we do it to make more entertaining content and because it's not an invalid way to buy a computer what it also does oh sorry go ahead no nope, finish it off sorry i thought um, you're done what it also does is it reveals um you know how these companies behave in the situation that allows them to apply the most pressure to the customer it's much more difficult to apply a high pressure sales tactic to someone who is over email or over live chat where they can just easily ghost you than it is when you're on the phone. Once you have someone on the phone, you are a lot closer to making a sale. And that's just like basic sales principles. So these companies yeah. that do have extremely robust and mature sales strategies are going to know that they can go after you harder when you're on the phone. So that's a third reason that I thought of on the spot, but is a very valid one for us continuing to do it the way that we do. Totally. And you don't get to hear roosters if you're not over the phone. That's right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, or get scammed by Dell as easily. <laughs> yeah. um, I, have, I have a question for, for each of you, actually, and they're actually different questions. And one of them is not related to this project at all, but I'm going to ask it first. Got it. Um, Sarah, what is your favorite piece of merch that you have done design work on? Oh, is she going to spoil the one that I'm about to announce? <laughs> I don't Probably have not. to. Probably I don't think not. that's my favorite. Um, I loved doing the folding at home t-shirt because it was for a great initiative. Uh, we were able to raise lots of money. Um, we raised a ton it... of money, Sarah, like 60 yeah, grand no, or something like that. It was awesome. crazy. Um, and also it's just cool seeing, I think that was the first t-shirt design that I did. Um, and yep. it was really cool for me to see people around the office wearing it. Um, Cause like I've never done a project like that before. So being able to see, and then also people like tweeting pictures of them with their new folding at home t-shirt. I was like, is this what it's like? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it, that was a lot of fun. You know, what's going to be a blast for you? Like just absolutely going to blow your mind is when we can finally do LTX again and you are walking around on the floor at LTX and people are just like decked out in your designs. It's like, crazy. Yeah. It's it's going to be super fun. Like Lloyd, I remember talking to him after LTX um in 2019 and he was just like this is pretty cool because as a designer, I mean, obviously it's nice to get paid. You know, everybody needs to make money. <laughs> But as a designer, uh, just like for me as like a, a content creator, like it's it's only so much fun to make videos if I'm just throwing them out into a void and nobody's watching them. It's only yeah. so much fun to design stuff that you think is cool, but it's really validating to see a bunch of people agree. And because it's going to be so long before another LTX, man, there are going to be a lot of Sarah designs walking around on the show floor. And then people are going to start walking up to you and asking you to sign them, which is like a whole oh. other level of surreal. Are you ready? Yeah. 
I don't know. I really don't You're know. Even, your own just art. Like, <laughs> even just releasing this, like when it launched, I was just like, I illustrated an ABC book. Like, I don't know how many people who get to say that in their lifetime. And like, that's super special for me. So. I still need to stock up on a few of those. And we've sold thousands of them, which is that's pretty cool. insane. Yeah. Insane. Pretty sick. Okay. LTTstore.com. Okay, question for for Linus now. Oh, um, and back back more on topic. I Fine. guess. Yeah, hit me. Uh, have any of those companies reached out since then? Have you talked to Dell essentially, but also have any of the other companies reached out? Um, I don't think Main Gear has done anything as crazy as last time. I think last time they like put out a press release talking about how we praised their customer service and stuff like that. I don't think they've done that this year, but I did, haven't paid attention i buy power tweeted they were very proud of themselves i mean they've won two years in a row so they should be um you know they definitely had some things to fix and they acknowledged that in their tweet they said hey here's the like three or four things that we agree we could do better on but we're super proud that we have two crowns in a row now and we're looking forward to another one so they were jazzed as for dell I've seen them go on the defense on Twitter a little bit. They've acknowledged it, both on the Alienware handle and the Dell Cares handle, I think. Uh, but they have not actually, like, contacted us, to my knowledge. So, what do you think about, and this is, we're maybe getting into the weeds here a little bit. Sure. Um, but they legitimately scammed you. Yeah. Like, uh, are you going to go after them? No. That's not my no. jam. I mean, if I was, I was way more mad. I mean, like completely outside of the like business relations stuff. Yeah. They stole your money. Sort like. of. So here's where Dell, I think, gets off the hook. If okay. I was the litigious sort, um, I got an invoice that had those items on it. So there's. Before you paid for it. Is that correct? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I had paid for it, but. I think that given that those items were on the invoice, they can basically pull up the paper trail and say, look, we provided an invoice. We delivered exactly what it said on the invoice at the price that is shown on Dell.com to within a couple of dollars. Uh, we, are, we are all good. Everything is all good. Um, I think they'd get away with it. And I think that's where, that's where we were actually very close to changing the title of part four to uh, Dell defrauded us instead of Dell scammed us uh, or something okay. like that. Uh, I, I think don't that's know what enough we stuff on. about legal things to comment on that, but so that sounds... Scam, scam is bleh. not like, uh, uh, like a legal term to my knowledge. It's more of like a colloquial term. They definitely like, they ripped us off. They scammed oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we could say that they defrauded us. And honestly, I was far more angry um, about the Apple situation when we broke the computer, which we were always upfront about. It's been extremely frustrating over the years to see people come back at us and say I that we were expecting some kind of handout from Apple. Yeah. We were not expecting a handout. We walked into the Apple store and said, hey, we broke this. You guys are the manufacturer. We would like to pay you to fix it. We understand that this is going to cost money, but as the manufacturer, we believe, however naively that might have been, we believe that you have the tools and the know-how to fix your own d product. That's what happened. <laughs> and they sent us away and there was no solution. And what made that particularly infuriating was that was a professional product. That is a different can of worms. When some consumer desktop is sold with a high pressure sales tactic and antivirus and uh you know what was the other thing and warranty that i didn't want that's like yeah what else is new when a professional product has absolutely no recourse whatsoever if it is broken that is not okay that that is something that could be that, aside from the cost of the product and it was an expensive product so imac pro aside from the cost of the product there's an opportunity cost there's a business interruption cost to not having that equipment running potentially now luckily i'm in a situation where i don't really need that imac pro that badly my business can run just yeah. fine without it but if i was a small time you know freelance videographer or something and that thing like didn't work and maybe it was my bad maybe it was there should be a way to fix it if I am able to pay for it. That was why I was so mad. 
Um, so it, I don't know. To me, maybe I'm just desensitized to it. It's not because I have any kind of like special place in my heart for Dell. Don't get me wrong. I just am. I, I don't know. I've I've bought enough things at Future Shop, which is what Best Buy here used to be called. Uh, well, sort of. It's complicated, but it was basically Canadian Best Buy. Uh, I bought enough things at yeah. Future Shop and Best Buy and like big box stores with commission structures like they have for selling warranty that like it just doesn't surprise me at all. I, I, I think... Anytime you get into charging me more money, I'm going to get a little triggered. But I think, like, it, it, if if I was in a in a future shop back in the day, and they've got this commission structure, and I tell the uh, I tell the sales representative five times or whatever it ended up being that I don't want the uh, whatever it's called. I don't remember anymore. Yeah. PSP or whatever. Yeah, Best the Buy PSP. Um, product I, I sales plan. Or product that service plan. Five times. If I tell them that and yeah. then I go to pay and I'm like, huh, this is more expensive than I thought. I must have miscalculated the tax or something in my head. And then I walk out and while I'm walking out, I look at my receipt and the PSP is on there. I would freak. But here's the issue. No matter how much you freak, no matter how mad you are about it, what's the worst that can happen? What, what are you going to do? Take them to small claims know. court? It's like See, actually a waste of your time. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Oh, there you go. I you know, think at like, least I'd be applying pressure. See, in this situation, what I would do is I would I would put them on blast on social media, which kind of happened by default. So I don't really know what you would do. Um, my biggest but, worry is just like people buying computers, not knowing what they're buying. And then Dell like bringing down the price of the computer just so they can add those like warranties that they don't want. Well, uh, like, that's that's what happened. Unfair. You, yeah, exactly. You gave them a budget and they basically, as far as I can tell, the representative maximized their commission. That was what they did. They slipped in. So however they get paid, we don't know exactly what the structure is, but we know for sure. Well, okay. We know for sure they get a bonus for selling warranty. That yeah. much was crystal clear. Absolutely. <laughs> what we yeah. don't know is if they get more for selling a higher end system, for example, though. So uh, what they did apparently was they minimized the system because apparently they get less commission from that. That's what we're guessing. And then maximized the services that they could put on. They tried real hard to get you on the financing, but they weren't going to be able to sign you up for credit without you noticing. So they couldn't slip that in. They slipped in everything that they could. And, you know, I don't even blame the sales rep to be perfectly honest with you. To me, what that whole experience smelled like was a bad system. This is a system yeah. where Dell yeah. is not investigating these problems, obviously. This is a system where Dell is incentivizing their salespeople um, to just badger the customer effectively. Like it was clearly a trained behavior, what was happening there. Oh, Luke, yeah, so oh, there you go. Two Two questions that that I've got um, for you, Sarah, at this at this yeah. point is, uh, what do you think your your biggest one or maybe few pain points were, and what do you think your biggest one or or maybe few uh, like, like like good points of the experience were? Um, what bothered you the most? <laughs> Um, it's hard for me to look at pain points. Honestly, I I always am looking at the positive in any situation. Um, so like. Um, I honestly don't. I'll go back. I'll go back to my pain points. And I think my positive experiences during Secret Shopper were just like talking to genuine reps for different companies, like the guy who talked about bacon face masks. Like, <laughs> I, I just feel like you want that when you're trying to get help with your computer or trying to get help with anything, really. Because um, you're in, still doing it. Having worked with customer service in the past, though, do you think that that representative would have an issue with other customers? Like you liked it. I feel like uh, I would have a good know. time, but no, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think so. I um, think that a good rep could have adapted anyway. Yeah, that's true. Like that's part of being a good customer service representative. Now, I didn't work in the restaurant industry, but I did work sales floor sales in a computer store. And you, you got to just develop a sense for it. Okay, this person doesn't want to make small talk. Okay, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. let's, let's get down to business. They just need a cable and they need to get the heck out of here. Uh, versus like this person's like, doesn't really know the stuff very well and really wants to 
feel confident before they make their purchase and they need a lot of help. Or, or there's the ones that just want affirmation. They already know what they want, but they just want you to like tell them it's a good idea. And so you'll try to steer yeah. them to something else. Like I would have, this was, this was a really classic one. Like back when, uh, when I was a sales rep, AMD was on top in terms of price to performance. And, oh, uh oh, Sarah just lost the light. <laughs> We're okay, back. There we go. <laughs> um, AMD was on top for price to performance. And wait, no, were they? Let me think. Ooh, how far back was I? When was I sales rep? I think so. Whatever. The point, yes, yes, they were. And you'd have a lot of people coming in because they heard dun, 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 on TV or whatever. And they'd be like, okay, I want to buy an Intel CPU. And you'd say, hey, you know, I'd really think that you should get this one. I think you'd be really happy with it. And they'd go, oh, yeah, you know what? Uh, thanks for sharing that with me. But, you know, my brother's cousin's mother's daughter's dad um, said I should go Intel. It's the best. And then you kind of, you just back off. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're, it's above your pay grade to like get in arguments with people in the customer or in the, on the sales floor. And the, the reality of it is, so what if it's 9% slower in WinZip? Like the reality of it is they're going to get a computer that is going to work and probably going to be fine for whatever they need to do. So like at the end of the day, who cares? As long as you gave them the best information you could, it's sort of, it's their decision. It's their life. It's their money, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, just just talking to personable people was definitely a great part of my experience. Yeah. Um, cool. And then uh, I, that one guy who told me to take out the GPU, um, it was really funny when he said, like, who knows, it could already be broken. Like, <laughs> <laughs> even though he told me to do the wrong thing, probably shouldn't have let me try to rip out that gpu for as long as he did mm -hmm. um he still made me feel better about myself so i mean that's a positive and a negative in itself honestly because like I for me that... as a customer it's different as a zoomer how <laughs> obvious was it to you that they should just like get on a quick facetime or like hangouts call with you like <laughs> that's not even something that i thought about really <laughs> yeah <laughs> truly oh all right i mean if it was up to me, I wouldn't be calling anybody. I would see if I could figure out the problem on my own. Um, but since that that's not the charm of Secret Shopper, obviously, I had to go through the whole process. Um, okay, a bad, bad point. Mm, after seeing that Dell scammed me, or not necessarily scam me, but um, that made me mad. <laughs> that made me mad because they took advantage of me yeah. as a paying customer. And that's really frustrating because how many other people are they doing this to really? Yeah. Um, that's that's the worst thing that I can think of at this point in time. I do find it entertaining that your positive point actually has absolutely nothing to do with computers or the purchasing of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to forget about the computer part. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. See, I don't know what to do with this. I just got an email from someone that claims to be from formerly a Dell uh, phone sales rep that basically kind of confirms a lot of the assumptions that we've made about how they've structured their sales process. Um, and apparently it's like worse than I thought. Unfortunately, without us having any confirmation from this person, uh, I don't want to talk about it. But what I will do is I'm going to reach out to this person uh, asking for proof that they worked at Dell. Ah. And can you back up any of these claims? I just, ever since watching it, I've just been, been like having, having fun little daydreams about like the next follow-up video, like the duel with Dell. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, I just want to see it go down. You know, I just, Some cause of that was so... Ugh, that like bothered me a lot. I think whew, some of these might accusations have me more are pretty than the big. Card. Some okay. some oh, of these okay. accusations in this uh, in this email are like pretty explosive. So I'll uh, let's see let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Uh, it would be not great for our business to like go to go to war with Dell. But guys, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if this turns out to be true, we're taking it public, and that's just the way it's going to be because we can't nice. ignore that stuff. Yes, it's uh, coming. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> all I right. want it so bad. <laughs> I've got just a couple more questions for Sarah. Olenek over on Floatplane asks, uh, Sarah, what got you into graphic design and what makes you love it? 
Ooh, this is such a great question. I've thought about this in my head many, many times before. Um, I'll do a little, a little life story really quick here. Um, so in high school, I only took science and math courses, really. I did physics, pre-cal, chemistry, biology, uh, and I enjoyed it. I wanted to go into university um, to study, like, biology stuff. I wanted to be a forensic pathologist, which is basically somebody who looks into dead bodies and trying to figure out the cause of death. Um, but I wasn't that great at science. <laughs> And I always loved doing art as a spare time activity. So when I was stressed, I just finished all my homework. I would be like, okay, I'm just going to draw. Or I'm just going to paint. Um, and then my grandfather bought me a computer in like grade seven. Um, it was a little MacBook Air, 11 inch. Just like, and I loved it. I used to play around with um, paint and stuff on there. Um, so then going into university, I was like, I'm just going to follow my passion. <laughs> Which the, I know there's like a meme that's like graphic design is a passion, but or is my passion, but it really is like as soon as I started, um, I realized that I loved combining art and technology, and that is essentially what graphic design is. Um, and in my first semester, I did this project and submitted it to a worldwide contest and ended up winning like one of the awards. Oh, cool. Um, so then I just figured out that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I finished my diploma and now I'm here. So I guess it was meant to be. Yeah. We're your first job like out of school, aren't we? Yeah, pretty well. Okay. I worked at a design agency in Vancouver for like three months, um, just doing freelance stuff um designing for uh developments so like doing naming for developments and branding for developments cool um, but it was really boring yeah so. that would be pretty boring compared to like illustrating a children's book by the way yeah literally this is great uh paul gerards actually just pointed out something that frankly i did not notice uh this is a super chat over on youtube are you aware that dell sold you the in-home service package and tried to get you to RMA the product to the depot yeah. yourself instead of yeah. suggesting to send someone. I did not notice. That was pointed out in the comments, <laughs> actually. But yeah. That's like, hilarious. They are they're oh so God. bad. Like they're, they're so bad. That's brutal. Scum and villainry. That hurts. That oh. honestly hurts. <laughs> the worst. Uh. 